the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Plenty happening in the sporting space over the weekend. I want to start with the Wildcats. They lost on Friday night to Melbourne United. It was a bit of a, it was a closer game. Yeah. But then they went on and um, I didn't get to see that one, but I did see yesterday's game against the Sydney Kings and they were blown and they were a long way off it yeah. for most of the game. And I just feel that, I mean, clearly they haven't gelled at this point in time, but yes. they've got a couple of big guys, Nat, but their their defence is still poor, and I know I've mentioned this yeah. a fair bit, and when we they had need Jordan that, in here. that absolute terrier like Damian Martin was. They do, they do, yeah. Because he's not a big guy, but he was just ferocious in his defence, and, and that's what they need. Oh, and the same thing them. goes for Mitch Norton when he was at his best. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He was exactly True. the same, in the same mm. mould, and yep. they're just really lacking that at the moment. They're unable to stop teams scoring, and despite... Um, the Wildcats having a uh, yeah a bunch of guys who can really, you know, yeah. a, at the right moment can shoot like yeah. nobody else. They're and, not getting it done. And Alex Sarr can get a few sort of you know yeah. re- rejects along there. Like he's he is going to be a terrific player, but he's like what is he nineteen or something? Yeah, nineteen. He's a baby. Hopefully, he'll develop as the season goes yeah. on. Minwoo Lee took out the Macau Open yesterday. Shot a record uh, thirty under for the weekend, which is sensational. The Macau Open, like, it's not a massive tournament. It's worth one million dollars US. So his oh, prize. Oh, I wouldn't get out of bed for that. <laughs> it takes over about 250 grand. But, um, that's not a decent. But 30 under, like you're not making any mistakes no, the whole way crazy. around. that's crazy. What was it, a putt-putt course? What is it, that? It, well, it seems like What it, was that? The way, thing, the way he shot the lights out over the weekend. So would, would you go, because Macau's famous for its casinos, right? It, it is. Goes, you take your 250 and go straight to the casino. Is that the way it works? When I retired, the, our club went over to Macau on a footy trip and they had an absolute belter and there. <laughs> few people got in a f- bit of trouble. It's one of those places where <laughs> don't step out of line. And of course you do, because that's the way things happen. The trade period still continues today. We've only, uh, it finishes on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, when there will be a flurry, because everything happens basically in the last 25 minutes, doesn't it? Yeah, because uh, for everyone out there, why does it go so long? Because it's a poker game. Everybody sits yes. there and says, this is what we can afford. And you go. I'm not taking and, that off. Uh, yep. And yeah. it's just back and forth, back and forth until the last moment. With Fremantle, they've still got Lockie Schultz and Liam Henry for deals to be done. But there's 20 other players who are in the list at, have requested trades to other t- teams that haven't been done with three days to go. 20 yes. other players. So that's a lot of shuffling around. Yeah, and, and trying to get the best deal for the one that you're trying, that wants to leave. Yeah, yeah and, I, and it's, gee, it's really changing in that Jack Gunston moved from Hawthorne to Brisbane last season. He's requested a trade back to Hawthorne. No, uh, because they should, it's not working for you him. You shouldn't at be allowed to. You shouldn't yeah. be allowed to. That's not fair. I feel like he's been rejected by Hawthorne to go to Brisbane. Maybe that wasn't the case. Now he's going to go back there if he gets the opportunity. That's so like things are changing when, really rapidly. That's like when here. your mate goes back to their toxic ex, and you're like, now yeah. I have to be friends with them again. I know, and you've already and you've already said some. Yeah. Oh, you've read some pretty bad them. things about them. <laughs> Over at the Rugby World Cup, um, it was a great game between England and Fiji. Fiji looked like they were down and out, but the Fijians come back really strongly. And then a couple of penalties went against them late in the match, and they end up losing just by a couple of field goals. So that was unlucky for them. South Africa were able to get over the host nations, France, by just one point. And Afghanistan beat England in the cricket last night. Unbelievable stuff. That is extraordinary. Hadn't won a game at the World Cup in 14 other attempts. And it happened to England. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame. Good stuff. It? Straight in action tonight, everyone. Time to catch up with the big Pav and talk a bit of sport from the weekend. And Pav, no doubt with weather like this, you'd be striding it out in your budgie smugglers Keep down padding. the beach. We don't have him yet. We don't have him yet. Okay. Keep padding. Be uh, um, be assured that he should be down the beach in his budgie smugglers. Pav, okay, can you confirm or deny that that was the case over the weekend? Uh, I was definitely down the beach. I'm not rocking the budgies as much as I used to. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, why is Sean still doing it then? <laughs> uh, well, maybe he's got a bit more peacock in him than, uh, than uh, I do in terms of trying to strut around. That, yeah, well, I've got plenty of that. I've got plenty of that. The standard, the standard uh, board shorts these days, I think, except or what what age, Sean? Because like, I reckon the budgies are almost a, a gauge for the age that, that you are. Like, you know, yep. the older generation are happy to strut around with them and and uh, and then get in the water. What age do you think is acceptable? Like the, the only reason I used to wear them was was large because you put them under your uh, under your footy shorts or yeah. whatever. But yeah, what where, where do you sit? I think Hornet said to me once: once you hit forty, you can back you can get back into them because then you've got no okay. care in the world. Just strut around. Yeah, and just yeah, strut. Yeah. Just strut. I sort of I, I feel uncomfortable being around uh, the kids. 
<laughs> just, just no good. So I think yeah. um, well, Sean, I think Sean the... thinks his kids should suffer. I do, I do. Yeah, yeah certainly do. Oh, they hate yeah. it. They hate mm. it. But well, it's not know. it's as much about your kids as it is other kids as well. So I think <laughs> a pair of board, I think a pair of board shorts is more than acceptable. Mm. Yeah, well, down there across the week, and how how good's the weather been the last uh, the last week or so? It's been magical. So enjoying the hot weather. Now, speaking of the hot weather, I'm just going to get straight into this Let's because. Do it. Yes. A team yesterday that um, couldn't handle the hot conditions and couldn't handle um, the NAM football club in Melbourne. So Mick Pryor, the AFL uh, Eagles coach, yep. AFLW Eagles coach, um, has come out swinging, hasn't he, around the fixturing of, of last year's um, premiers, Melbourne, or yep. NAM, as they yep. were uh, renamed for the Indigenous round. Um, yeah, winning by 70 points yesterday, saying that you know, he doesn't understand the fixture. Now, I think he's got a point. You know, Some people might go out there and say, well, hang on a second, you, you you're playing in the competition. You have to play the you best play teams, teams. But we know, yeah. But we know that uh, Melbourne have been a wonderful team over a, a long period in the AFLW, and the Eagles have been struggling and, and do struggle in that competition. They're building. They had their first victory a few weeks ago, but to come out and uh, and just blatantly say, "Look, there's 18 teams in the comp. There's only 10 games we get to play. How do we how do we get to play the best team?" It's, uh, it's a pretty honest and open conversation for Mick. I didn't mind it. I know, I know, but a lot of people are teeing off on him, saying that they're complaining. Pav, they shouldn't <laughs> complain. They're just going to play teams, well, that, but but they don't. They don't. They certainly don't make the igna- an, um, example that in the competition, as you said, there's ten games. Yes, they're the best team. The Eagles are down the bottom. They have been so in the AFL men's yeah, the competition. AFL get, yeah, they do. The it. AFL get the opportunity to fixture. I mean, look, we know the AFL men's competition. The fixture is just. I mean, of. of Spoken about this a lot. How I think the inequity in the draw is just outrageous, yes. uh, and how um, you know th- there should be only everyone plays each other once is my firm view. And then um, you know th- there's a mix or re- recut of the draw thereafter, and maybe some some um, you know top sixes and bottom sixes, and <clears throat> excuse me, so on and so forth. So it's just flowed through really in terms of what the AFL um, do with their fixturing. There is no. They, they, they say there's science and reason behind it, but um, in the end, uh, I don't disagree with Mick here. Um, but the point is, they have to get better. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no. that, I mean, so, bot- yeah, it sucks. It's a, you know, it's a, nobody likes being beaten like that. That's a, that's an absolute belting. Yeah. But the bottom yeah. line is, like, you know, you've got to play the good teams to get better. Like, correct. It's good yeah, for yeah, long-term right. development. Pav, on the footy at the um, moment with the trade, you. can you give us any updates? Because I actually, I was devastated. I want to speak to you during the week because I'm still heartbroken by Lockie Schultz request Lockie, to be traded. Yeah, no, I think everyone's a bit um, bit rocked by that one. So, state of play is that it looks as though Collingwood uh, are finally, uh, you know, agreeing to to play ball. If they want to get him, he's in contract. He's a you know um, a player that Freo obviously desperately want to keep. Um, it is unfortunate that he wants out. He's he's not a um, a top 10 type of player in terms of, you know, where um, their skill level is. But in terms of desperation and attitude and effort and what other things he brings to the team, he's in the top few, in my opinion, um, for his chase and tackle and his his role playing that he does in that forward line. So Collingwood, look as though pick 19 is on the table, their first round, end of first round selection, along with a mix of other picks later in the draft. Um, it'd be interesting because I think Freo are looking to load up for next year, so perhaps it's a future first round as well within a, a swap of picks, um, you know, later in the draft. But um, oh, look, don't be surprised if he doesn't go, surely. I think that's probably the okay, I mean, it's just Bell, awkward, so. Pav. Is yeah, it? But, but like, yeah, it, it is, but it, I think there's been lots of examples now, yeah, where, I know. um, you know, that that happens, and yeah, okay, you wanted to leave because you, you, know, you wanted a better deal, um, you know, it sounds like it's a four or five year deal that's on the table as compared to. Um, a one-year deal and conversations for a longer-term deal at Frio. So, you know, I think uh, yes, it's awkward, but at the same time, we're in a in a uh, marketplace now where that happens quite regularly. Yeah. So, I think I think there's been an adjustment as compared to sort of five or ten years ago. Hey, Pav, can I ask a question about that? So, when a player like Lockie Shorts comes and says to, says to Fremantle, "I want to go to Collingwood," how mu- how much of a conversation has he had with Collingwood at that point? Like, obviously, yeah, they know. Fair. Well. I, I'd say it'd be his, pretty uh, funny if manager. you just said, "I want to go there," and you haven't had a conversation yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah. No, I think um, I think he, he would have definitely had uh, a conversation or two with Collingwood. Obviously, he would have been engaged initially through his manager, so mm. the, the manager and Collingwood list manager yes. uh, or, or general manager of Footy Graham might have, might have probably had two or three conversations. Uh, Lockie's probably had one or two, 
Um, but it, yeah, it's like the whole, you know, I, I want to return home and then there's... Yes, you know, you pick to one, one club specific just, club out, yeah. out of all the clubs in Melbourne. But I, I guess what it does do is just narrow the focus for both Frio and Collingwood to get a deal done then yeah. as compared to saying, I want to go home and you have to go and speak to 10 yeah. different clubs and try to orchestrate a deal in, in 10 days it ends up being pretty hard. So it does define the process a bit more. Yes. But, um, and I like that look, it picked we'll the right premiers. Yeah. <laughs> There's still about, I think there's still about, yeah, 15 or 20 guys who have at least said, hey, look, I'm interested in the trade. But having been through this process before, there's probably another 15 or 20 that are, you know, in limbo right now saying, well, you know what, I haven't officially asked for a trade, but if something bobs up in the last moment, yeah. you think Jager Amira last year. Yes. There was yes. no chance he was coming to Fremantle. All of a sudden, last yeah. day, some deals, are, some deals are done. So he becomes a Fremantle player from the Hawks. So... Um, yeah, fascinating couple of days to go. Uh, and also tonight, Shawnee, of course, yes. cricket. We need oh. a win, a desperate win. See Afghanistan, the upset against... Yes, how's that? Off. We're last out of 10 teams. Yeah, we're going terribly. We we just need... Like, it's one of those ones where you just need to win. You need to find a way. It doesn't matter how ugly it is. Like, we just need to... We First, we just need to make some runs. Like, yes. was it 190 and 170? Oh, that's not going to beat any team. No, no. Miss uh, Mar- March and Dave so. Warner, I think, have at the top of the order have put together like 25 runs is almost their highest score together. That's yeah, not great. Mitch can do that in no, one No, we need them so to fire. 430, uh, Channel 9. Catch all of that, of course. Good yeah. on you, Mav. Love I look work, forward Pav. to watching it. Thanks for your time, brother. Good on you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast.